Friday, January morning, the year of our Lord, 2011. I slowly moved from my bed to open my blinds from my view of the magnificent Chicago skyline and frosty Lake Michigan. Living high, but feeling low. My mind was in the clouds over the lake. You see, today I would move on to another view, a view of my digestive system. My destination, the University of Chicago Center for Discovery. My body was drained of what was once electrifying energy. I was slow to get dressed. Uncertainty entered my mind a million times over again. What would they discover? The past few months for me were filled with whys. Why did I feel this way? Why me? Why no one seems to know why? For the first time in my life, I felt alone, without hope and helpless. I searched my soul for that black lesbian warrior spirit that once was, but was no more. I had no armor, no protection for the free radicals that were attacking my anatomy. Stripped of my being, but determined to continue to stand, and that I did. Within the next two hours, I had arrived at the hospital for another dreaded and undesired medical adventure. My anxiety was raging and rising now on the ceiling of my enclosed space, a bed, chair, and a device to monitor my vital signs. The anesthesiologist approached the bed, documents in hand. I followed his eyes as he glanced over them. He then looked at me strangely and stated, I was reviewing your results from last week. So you have the same disease Walter Payton had. Walter Payton is dead, I responded. The great running back for the Chicago Bears, the Hall of Famer. He was famous, wealthy, healthy, and only 44 years old when his short life ended. He explained to me that I have PSC, primary sclerosis conolitis, a rare and debilitating disease that affects only three in 100,000 people and leads to cirrhosis and liver failure. There is no treatment or no cure for this disease. I was shocked and I was afraid. The tears covered my face. I would no longer exist. Ones who life was about to end, I thought. I don't recall much more about that day, but my numb body returned home with unidentifiable emotions. The following day, I received a call from the hepatologist. She spoke as if she was irritated. I thought, how ironic. She confirmed my diagnosis and told me to go to the county because it would be 30 days before my insurance would be effective. The county, I thought, it would take months for me to get an appointment. You see, my existence meant absolutely nothing to her and her existence meant absolutely nothing to me. So I said F you and hung up the phone. Two weeks later, depressed and frail, I asked a friend to take me to Northwestern Hospital. Again, a room full of doctors. But I mustered up enough strength to tell my story and to ask for help. After 25 years as a social worker advocating for and providing healing spaces for children with no homes, women who were abused, and anyone considered a have not, I figured I had better do a damn good job of advocating for me. You see, dying was not on my agenda, and my life would not cease to be purpose driven. Minutes later, an attractive physician with a smile returned to my room with the words that I so desperately needed to hear. I am going to help you. Maybe there was some miscommunication between you and the other doctor, he stated. These words kept breath in my body, but two years later, I was no longer able to work. 2013, I was homeless, jobless, and was living off of the generosity of my high school friend, John who I had reconnected with after 30 years. Unlike my bio 
logical brother who I love with everything I have, John loved me unconditionally. And so did my adopted church family. They were my support. I waited two years to get a check for under $800 from SSI. I waited another two years for SSDI. You see, I had worked from the time I was 16 years old, but they only saw fit to give me a monthly check that still does not cover my basic needs. I had to move into a building managed by slum lawyers. After visiting the Chicago Housing Authority office and being told that the housing waiting list was 25 years, today I still wait. I live in the third largest city in the United States but there is no adequate housing for me to live or heal. Eating healthy, that's not an option because according to the Department of Human Services, my $1,400 a month that I paid into the system allows them to only give me $48 a month in SNAP benefits and requires a $550 spend down payment for Medicaid that I cannot afford. My name is Lee. I am a queer woman who was once the provider for those living in poverty and distress. Today, I am them and they are me. But ain't this America, home of the brave and land of the free? Have I not been brave and courageous? Even though you may refuse to acknowledge my humanity and refuse to validate me, I ask that you please not take away my life, liberty, our pursuit of happiness, for I would never, ever take away yours.